I'd like to welcome Ellen Williams to the show. And if everyone doesn't remember Ellen, she was from Athena. And of course, you do go on to do your solo career um, now, which is absolutely wonderful. But welcome to the show, Ellen. It's absolutely lovely to talk to you. Thank you so much. It's lovely to speak to you at last. I know we've sent a few emails in the past and, and you mentioned Athena and I know that Shauna has been into the studio um, on behalf of Athena, but it's lovely to speak to you, you know, virtually, almost in person now. So. I mean, the lockdown has is, is created many opportunities, hasn't it, for a lot of people to connect through like Zoom and Skype and I think people are really sort of taking advantage of that now and I think it works really well. So I hope once we come out of lockdown that doesn't stop. <laughs> oh, no, me too. I mean, I'm almost more social, you know, because it's so easy just to turn the screen on, isn't it now? But uh, no, I do miss seeing people in person very much, but it's yeah. lovely to have this option. Yeah, fantastic. So, um, Ella, let me just talk to you then about how it all began for you, because um, you, we know a lot about you from Athena, but we don't really know you as a person, not properly. So if you could sort of talk us through, you know, how it all started for you, when did you first become interested in singing? Okay, well, for those listening who may not know me, I'm a classical singer from Wales. Um, and music has just always been, you know, part of the family, part of my life. So I grew up in South Wales, um, a musical family, because my, my mother was a harpist, a concert harpist, and she, she played and performed all over the world. Um, so it's, it's always been something that's been, classical music has always been played in the household. Yeah. Um, and apart from that, my my grandmother was was very adamant when when me and my siblings were little that we would um, learn the songs of Wales, learn the hymns and arias and the folk songs of Wales and compete in the Eistedd Vodai. So I, you know, I learned these folk songs of Wales from a very early age and I heard yeah. them constantly. Like I've got a lovely memory of my grandmother singing Adelana Moor, which is a very well-known Welsh folk song. Um, which means on the seaside, yeah. um, and it's a it's a fond memory I have of her. But um, yes, yeah, so I I went on to do a lot of competing in the Eistedd Vodai, and that is um, a big cultural festival that we have in Wales. So you have um, poetry reading, music, singing, dancing, you know everything, um, and that kind of gave me a good grounding to know to you know to work for something because yeah, yeah. it was competitive because you'd compete against people so as a youngster you'd you'd compete to get first prize or second or third you know um but it was it was also a really lovely environment because I was the best of friends with all the people who I was competing against yeah and that sort of led naturally then into I mean it must have sparked something in me to want to continue singing professionally and I did after a little gap of studying languages at university go and study singing professionally so um, that's a few years ago now I left college and and I haven't stopped I, I say I haven't stopped I haven't stopped singing all my life I think you know when I was born I was singing practically so <laughs> that's absolutely incredible and of course you um, started with Athena um, quite a few years ago, didn't you? Tell us how, how that came about then. Yeah, so I mentioned how, you know, you grow up competing against your cohort in Wales and you become very friendly. And um, Sean Ed and Gwaud from Athena were, were two ladies who I obviously, I knew of on the circuit, on the music circuit in Wales. And, um, you know, we'd been in a concert together and we happened to sing together one evening and then Athena was formed. That was back in 2017. And, you know, I had a lovely couple of years singing with them and I know that you were very supportive. So thank you for playing our music on your show. Um, yeah, this year it's been, it's, you know, it's sad that I haven't been able to see, to see them or to get together or rehearse at all. But, um, so I think Athena's having, you know, we put it aside for now. We had a wonderful few years, but, um, so you, you're sort of going your own ways now, are you? Are you doing your own solo careers for a while? Yeah, I think, well, we always can, we always kept up our kind of solo career alongside the group, but the way things have been this year, it's kind of fallen, you know, I've had um, more of my own music to concentrate on, really. Yeah, so yeah. That's how it's... 
often by the rest. Yeah. Now, I mean, you've performed in huge um, concert halls, haven't you? You know, the Royal Albert Hall, Bridgewater Hall. How must that be for you? I mean, it must just be an incredible experience because those places, the acoustics are just wonderful, aren't they? They are. And honestly, it feels like so long since I've given a proper performance now because it's been it's been a year. So my last my last concert was in March last year before everything closed down. And, you know, being reminded of somebody that I sang in these wonderful halls is is kind of nostalgic now. Um, but yeah, the Royal Albert Hall was was really special. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, yes, Cadogan Hall in London is such a beautiful place to sing. And and right on the doorstep here in Wales, we have the Brangwyn Hall in Swansea, which is which is beautiful and such such lovely acoustics. And of course, St. David's Hall, which is one of my favourites, which I've been fortunate to sing in a couple of times. Yeah. So in terms of um, people that you've performed with, What's been your most memorable? The most memorable? Oh, see now, <laughs> I would love to be able to say because last summer I had a concert that was cancelled where I should have been singing with Sir Bryn Tervel. And I would have loved to have done that. I mean, I, I'm fortunate that it's been postponed rather than cancelled mm -hmm. um, with the Welsh National, with the Orchestra of Welsh National Opera in St. David's Hall. Mm -hmm. um, but I did sing at... Bryn and Hannah's wedding and that was a huge huge honour so that's something that I always you know when people ask me what's the most brilliant thing you've done that always comes to mind and it was yeah. I felt very honoured to be asked to do that. That's absolutely incredible so what would be your if you have to sing a duet with somebody who would it be who would you love to sing a duet with? Oh my gosh I think Andrea Bocelli would be the dream <laughs> honestly if I could sing something like time to say goodbye or Conte oh. Partiro with Andrea Bocelli that would just be a highlight you know <laughs> yeah absolutely it, he's just got the most amazing voice hasn't he and yes, um, he's such it, a showman as well to watch him is just it's brilliant it's so fascinating yeah I absolutely agree now in, in 2020 um you released your debut single and that was called Dancing with the Angels how was that for you? You know, it was your first solo release. How did you find it? Well, it wasn't sort of, it wasn't really planned. Um, to be honest, I'd, I'd been working in the studio with brilliant Welsh composer Mark Thomas, and we'd been recording for his film and television library, um, recording yeah. some Welsh folk songs and a variety of opera pieces and all sorts of things, really. But we happened to be recording the Welsh song Siogan, Mm. and we were coming up to Christmas and I just I just wondered if this would work as a as a Christmassy arrangement of something and and Mark kind of said I mean is the kind of person to just say yeah why not you know let's give it a go let's try it so so we did and I think we decided to do it and at that point I hadn't written the words to it I didn't know what I was going to write about um but I knew that I wanted to to write something meaningful some new words to the to the yeah. well-known well-known melody. Mm. Um, so I found myself one morning then um, watching the news and this was back in October, November time mm. um, and things were starting to, I think there was a new wave coming and it felt very, yeah. and there wasn't much of an end in sight at that point. <laughs> um, and I started just really feeling towards the people who will have, who will have lost somebody this year, um, yeah. as heartbreaking as it is. And in some small way, I felt like I could give back with this idea that those loved ones who have moved on now are now in heaven and dancing with the angels. So that's the kind of reasoning behind, yeah. behind the song. And I have family members who have been on the front line, you know, fighting this virus this year. And I felt very much like I can't really do anything. So it was, that was kind of my way of doing something. And I hope that a few people at least found some comfort in it. That, Pretty lovely and and of course that went straight to number one didn't it well yes which was a complete surprise to me I mean I had no idea how how the charts worked or anything and 
I woke up early that morning because I was excited. So I think I was up about 6 a.m. And <laughs> I happened to you know, refresh the charts on my phone. Well, I had to work out where to find them first. I went to the iTunes app on my phone and then well, where do I find this kind of thing? I don't know where to look. But I did find it, not expecting anything. And I woke my partner up and I was like, oh, it, it's number one. Like I, I honestly couldn't believe it. So I, I'm so grateful to everybody who supported it. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. And it, it's such a lovely surprise, isn't it, when that happens? You know, number one in the classical charts. How amazing is that? Now, of course, you've got another single which is released today, the 9th of February. Is that yes. right? It came out well, just yesterday. Yes, it came out on the 8th and um, I, it did go into the charts again. So I was very fortunate. It, like, it's just so pleased to see it there amongst names like Andrea Bocelli I mentioned and Ainaudi and the London Philharmonic Orchestra. It's quite, it's, you know, shocking to believe, but it's, um, it's doing well and it's had some lovely feedback. I mean, this, this track, Cinema Paradiso, is is one of my favorites. And I, I've always absolutely loved the film as well since the first time I saw it. So, so it is lovely to, to put out a song that, um, you know, I, I, I know so well and I've heard so many times. Absolutely lovely. So what about albums then? Is there anything in sort of in the pipeline for an album? Yes, well, I'd love to be able to give a date, but at this point, you know, who knows? Everything is so up in the air. I am working on an album um, and they do take a long time to come together. So in the meantime, I'm hoping that over the next few months, I'll be able to put out a few more singles. And, you know, I'm, I'm rather new to this releasing of music yeah. um i've been performing classically and in concerts for many many years but to put things out on itunes and spotify etc is new to me so i'm hoping to be able to do more of that over the next few months that's fantastic so i mean i know that this single we've mentioned the new single that's out at the moment and and i'm going to play that in a few minutes um so what do you plan then for the next 12 months what is your goal for the next 12 months? My goal? <laughs> Gosh, well, I can, you know, I don't even think ahead to the next week, let alone the next 12 months. Um, I'd love to just keep putting music out there for now. And I mean, a goal would be to be able to perform my songs in a concert with, with my own orchestra, with my own band, you know, that that would be a definite goal. I don't know how possible that's going to be over the next 12 months, but uh, it's certainly something to work I mean, towards. That would be incredible, wouldn't it? And, you know, I mean, I think a lot of artists have really struggled this past year or so. Mm. You know, and the lockdown has meant, you know, everything has come to a halt. All the performances have come to a halt. You know, it's affected so many people in lots of ways. And, you know, it has been a very difficult year for, for people in the arts. And entertainment industry and you know I think to to be able to continue to put music out um you know online streaming and stuff it's absolutely wonderful you know and I think it will give us all a good grounding for sort of the future you know to, to carry on um but let's just hope in the next you know few months things start to we get a bit of light at the end of the tunnel and we can start sort of performing again. That would just be incredible. Yes, but I know. I, I really miss being on stage as much as going to the theatre and going yeah. to watch the opera and see performances myself. So it's been a big learning curve this year of, of learning to keep producing music, whereas when, while we're not allowed to do it in person. So actually, um, my new single, the vocals were recorded at home yeah. and it's, it's been mixed elsewhere, mixed in the studio and put together by a whole team of people, wonderful people. Um, but even, you know, recording remotely has been something that I've had to learn this year. And it's- yeah. And I think I we've all learned new ways, haven't we? Of, of getting the music out there, doing, you know, various things, you know, work, people have learned to work in different ways, working from home, you know, there's, there's thousands of people who are working from home me included <laughs> and it's it is you know difficult but I think people have adjusted you know quite well to that yes um, yeah. so just ask um have you got plans for any original tracks on your album 
Um, I hope so. Yes. I mean, there's been, there have been a few um, that I was working on with, with composer Mark Thomas, and um, I have a few other collaborations on the go at the moment. And I mean, that's another wonderful thing that's actually come out of this horrific situation we're in, these collaborations, because I never would have met, you know, a lot of people that I have met over this last year if it wasn't for music happening virtually. So, um, I have a few collaborations planned and I'd love to do some more some more writing and be involved in the composing process so I am hoping that there'll be original songs yes <laughs> absolutely incredible so thank you so much Ellen it's been absolutely wonderful to talk to you do you want to let the listeners know about your website and where they can purchase your single Yes, well, if you, if you if you were to search for Cinema Paradiso um, by Ellen Williams on any of the, the normal distribution sites, I'm sure you'll find the track. And if you if you do download it, I really hope that you enjoy it and it brings back that lovely feeling, you know, of watching a classic film on a rainy afternoon or something, because it is okay. such a beautiful film, one of my absolute favourites. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ellen. If you just wait and we'll have a few uh, we'll have a chat in a few minutes, okay? But thank, thank you, Jane. All the best for the future. Thank you. <laughs>